Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna share with you two desserts that I made for my family last week that were quick and easy and delicious. And so they only have three ingredients between the two. Each dessert is two ingredients each, so three total. The main ingredient is going to be chocolate, and then one is gonna have bananas, and one is gonna have cookie butter. Now don't worry if you don't like cookie butter or if you don't have access to it, um, you can use peanut butter as another option, or there's a couple other things you could do with it, but what I'm gonna be making is chocolate covered bananas and chocolate bark, and they, they both can get super creative with how you do them, so let's get into that video right now. I wanted to share with you guys a really quick and easy snack slash dessert that you can do. I'm just gonna be making chocolate covered bananas. And so it's something I started doing a long time ago and it's uh, um, one that we really enjoy. You can make them ahead of time, wrap them individually and put them in the freezer. They are far less expensive than what you can buy at the store and they are so good. They're just a nice refreshing treat when it's hot outside or if you just want a little something sweet and um, these make you feel not as guilty for eating chocolate. And so I'm gonna show you guys how I make that real quick. Now, when it comes to chocolate, I use Calibit chocolate and it's a European chocolate that I get. I buy it on Amazon and I can link it below. However, that's not the chocolate you have to use. Um, it's just the one that I really, really like. You can use just regular chocolate chips, any kind of melting chocolate. And so let me show you how I do that. Okay, so it's really super ing simple ingredients. This is my chocolate and I'm gonna unwrap that in a minute. All you need is a sheet pan a uh, stainless steel bowl if you have one bananas I have quite a few we're gonna make quite a bit of them and then you're also gonna want um, parchment paper as well and that's to line your cookie sheet and then I almost forgot what you're also gonna want is craft sticks now this is what I use um, basically popsicle stick um, and so this is what I use for the chocolate covered bananas so I'm gonna show you guys how I put that together the first thing I've started with is actually I have a pot on my stove. I've got some water and it's not quite halfway full. And while I'm getting the chocolate ready, I'm going to turn up the heat. Now you want it on the smallest burner you have. You just want this water to start to get warm and then you're going to turn it down because you only want it as a very low slimmer, slimmer, a very low simmer because you don't want to burn the chocolate. So that's the first thing you're going to start. This is, this Calibit chocolate comes in an 11 pound block. So I do buy it that large. Um, I can find this chocolate, or at least I used to be able to, at um, Whole Foods as well, but Amazon is where I buy it. Sometimes I'll buy it from a kitchen supply store as well. Just depends on who has the best price. And when it comes, because it's an 11 pound block, you have to break it up, and that's what this is. I usually break it up, and so I'll just wrap the pieces in um, plastic wrap, and I have a container to store them in. And so, and don't worry about if the chocolate has a little bit of discolorization on it. That just means air has gotten to it. It's perfectly fine. The great thing about these chocolate covered bananas is they are dairy free so and gluten free so the entire family can enjoy them um, and I don't have to worry about any sensitivities to any of those items so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this chocolate in the bowl and I'm gonna get it on top of the water there's a couple of tricks I'm gonna show you guys that you can do because you wanna make sure that you don't warm this up too fast because you can easily burn the chocolate. Okay, I know it's gonna be really hard to see in the video, but the water is starting to steam up again. This was warm earlier, so it wasn't gonna take long. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down. And then I'm just gonna take my bowl of chocolate and put it on top. You don't want the water too close to the chocolate because too much steam is going to actually could actually burn it and overheat it quickly. Another trick that if you've got plenty of time and you just want to get it started, but you want to be careful with the temperatures, you can set a spatula or a spoon over the top and then set the bowl on top. And what that does is while it's still, whoop. Oops. Okay. What that does is 
it allows the steam to come up and still melt the chocolate, but it does it very slowly. So you're basically tempering the chocolate. Um, this is just an easy home method to do it. Tempering machines can be quite expensive. So um, this is one way to do it. If you are going to be in the kitchen working on a bunch of things at one time and you're not distracted by other things, really easy. Just take it off, put it on top and then just come check it every five to 10 minutes um, as it's beginning to melt. And so I'm just gonna let this go and let this start to melt before I start prepping the bananas. Okay, as you can see, the chocolate's all melted. It's maybe been 30 minutes, maybe an hour now. I've been busy doing other things in the house, so this is why I keep it on low so it can melt and I came back periodically to check on it. So this is what you're looking for, for your chocolate. So we're gonna go ahead and get these bananas dipped because we need to chill them in the freezer before um, we can wrap them up. So I always put a towel underneath my chocolate just to catch the water and so now I'm gonna start with just one of my bunch of bananas. Um, grab a knife here. And what I like to do is I'll just cut the tops off. I mean, this is pretty simple, fairly um, self-explanatory. Just cut off the bottoms. And now you can do two things. You could do a whole one. I actually prefer to cut these in half so what I like to do is just peel my banana and then I'm just going to cut it in half like that set it off to the side so you're just gonna have that much of a treat when you chocolate dip them so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these taken care of Okay, so I've got two bunches of bananas cut in half, and so, and I've got another cookie sheet with um, parchment paper because I'm going to knead it. And I'm just gonna take the popsicle stick and push it about halfway through. For the most part, as long as the bananas, I'll take a bunch of these, are not too ripe, you should be able to push it through about halfway without it coming out either side. It happens, I've done it. Um, I can feel it like right there. You can sometimes pull it back in and redirect it a little bit. Um, and that's perfectly fine to have like a little split because you're gonna dip this in chocolate. Now, if it punches through all the way and won't hold onto the stick, then you can just eat it, slice it, pour some chocolate over the banana and eat it that way and eat it right away. You don't have to freeze it. You can also slice these and do chocolate covered bananas in a coin shape. Um, this is um, a lot easier, in my opinion, to do it this way. Um, and so I just stick with it, but I, ha I have done it that way in the past and I've just found that I like this way a little bit better. Probably just more of a time factor than anything. And so I'm just gonna get the sticks into the rest of these and then we'll start chocolate dipping them. Now you can also, when you chocolate dip these, you can top these with chopped nuts if you want. Um, I just use leave them plain, but you could put coconut on them 
you could do anything. So what I'm gonna do, let me actually move this so you guys can see it just a touch better. So I'm gonna take my banana, I'm gonna tilt my bowl. Let's see, let me back that up. Okay, I'm gonna tilt my bowl. And then I'm just going to turn the banana like that. And you can see it gets coated in the chocolate. And then I just like to wipe Basically, I'm wiping the bottom of it like that. It's still gonna spread out some as it sits on your cookie sheet. Um, and, um, but it will help without having like this big pool of chocolate. And not that a big pool of chocolate's bad, but you do wanna like wipe some of it off just so you don't have an excess amount because you'll be surprised how much, as it's still kind of coming down, will it, um, pull onto the parchment sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these dipped and then I'll show you what we have. And then what I do is I put these in the freezer for about an hour just so they get nice and cold. And then that way, um, once they're frozen, in an hour, they're not frozen like solid in an hour, but they're frozen enough where the chocolate is frozen, and then I can wrap them individually. But now is the time that once you dip them, because the banana, oh my goodness, because, oh no, if this happens right here, where you lose your banana, just stick your um, stick back in there and just be super careful pulling it out. It does happen, that's the one that was a, a touch sensitive and again if they're more ripe they're going to um, be a bit softer and easier to come off of your stick so but once you get them all dipped then you can top them with chopped peanuts or chopped pecans um, you could put sprinkles on them for the kids you could even do mini chocolate chips coconut um, you could do all kinds of different things and if you're making them say let's say for fourth of july you could do red white and blue sprinkles you know there's all kinds of stuff you can put but you want to do it as soon as you've dipped them all go ahead and sprinkle because the chocolate's still wet and so that way um whatever you're topping it with will adhere to the chocolate Slippery little things today. <sighs> okay, and as you can see, you're starting to use your chocolate. So it's, you're taking some out of the bowl. You may have to tilt it just a touch more to be able to dip. And if you wind up running low on chocolate, I always leave my water on still to ensure until I'm completely done to make sure I don't need to melt any more chocolate. Um, and so, but just tilt your bowl as you need to. Um, to coat your banana. Okay, and as you can see, that's the first tray of bananas. So I'm gonna finish up the second tray and then get them in the freezer. Okay, so now I have just a little bit of space. I can fit probably two more bananas out of my third bunch here. Now this will last us for a little while. Um, now that I'm, it's been a while since I've made them and I'm not really sure why, I guess just hadn't got around to it. So by doing this now, this will probably last us maybe about a month. Now there's just not, some of us, well, okay, let me back up. 
all of us will eat it. Now that we have it, we'll see if it lasts us a month, I should say. I feel like doing a big batch like this usually does. And then a lot of times I will keep these in the freezer. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure why I haven't made them more recently, but just, I guess, not gotten around to it. Um, and so we have lots of other stuff going on or other things I'm making and I just haven't. But this is a great one, especially in the summertime when the grandkids come, when our niece and our nephews come to visit. This is a good one to have in the freezer for everybody. So it does get a touch messy. Um, this is my chocolate bowl. So I keep this. Um, I will clean this part up and then I cover it in plastic wrap and I save this because I can just remelt it again the next time I do this. So I'm gonna set that aside. It does get a little messy, which is why I always leave a towel down so I can clean up easily. Um, usually towards the end, I wind up getting some chocolate on the sticks just because it's a messy process. Um, but then this is sheet pan number two. And so we have a total, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 there. 28 halves, banana halves, that are covered in chocolate. And so for cost, this is a great option. Um, and they taste way better than what you can get in the store. So I'm gonna pop these in the freezer. And then I'll be back later to show you guys how I get them wrapped and put into a freezer bag. Now, while the bananas froze separately on a pan, I do like to wrap them individually. It just makes for a cleaner dessert option for people to pull directly out of the freezer bag and individual servings. And then that way you don't have to worry about the bananas either sticking or cracking and breaking because they're all in a bag together by themselves. I have enough. What I like to do is I like to take some of the melted chocolate and put it on a parchment lined um, pan and I'll just scrape most of it out and I'll probably go ahead and melt some more just to keep in there but then I'm going to spread it like this and what I'm doing is making chocolate bark and so um, you can do you can top this a couple different ways one you can just leave it as is. Um, you can sprinkle a little sea salt on it. You can um, top it with some raisins, some nuts, um, marshmallows, coconut, kind of whatever you like with your chocolate, basically. Um, and But what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna wash my hands in a minute, is I'm gonna take this cookie butter from Trader Joe's and I'm gonna melt some of it and pour it over the top. So I'm gonna go get cleaned up and then I'm gonna get this ready and then I'll show you guys how I do this. I'm going to take some of the cookie butter, probably just a big old scoop like that of it. Because we're going to melt, I'm going to be melting it down, it's going to spread. Okay, so I've got a big scoop, so I'm going to pop this in the microwave about 15 seconds, just a touch over. And as you can see, it's already melted. So you just want it to be pourable. Um, it doesn't need to be like super hot. You just need it to melt. And so, pull this in here. Oh, you guys can't see that. And now I'm just going to take it and just drizzle it on top of the chocolate. Like this. Alright, so that big scoop. Just like that. And you can put as little or as much as you want. Again, we really like cookie butter. So, um, and then I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. So this is gonna go in and it's gonna chill for an hour or so. And then I'm gonna break it up into bite-sized pieces and then keep it stored in the fridge. And this is another great little dessert that's quick and easy to put together. You can do peanut butter instead of cookie butter. Again, you can just leave it plain and 
or you can add in salt. I mean, I've done it with raisins, I've done it with strawberries. And now the strawberry ones you have to eat right away. Um, but I've done it a lot of different ways. You could crush up Oreo cookies. And again, you could do different flavors, just do a couple, divide it into three and do three different ones. There's so much you could do with it because it's really kind of whatever you want. So anyways, I'm gonna get this in the fridge and I'll be back when everything is chilled and then show you guys how I'm finishing up the desserts that we're gonna have for this week. Okay, so now I have two bags full of chocolate covered bananas, and so these are good to go back into the freezer. And now I have my Biscoff bark, and as you can see, it's nice and cold now. This gets cold, but it never like because I'm not freezing it, I'm chilling it. So this will still always remain somewhat soft, but not like it was obviously when we melted it. And so now I'm just going to take this and just break it into bite-sized pieces like that. And then I'm gonna stick it in a bag and we're gonna put it back in the fridge because you wanna keep this cold. I feel that this the chocolate holds up better by staying in the refrigerator. Now it might just be this type of chocolate. Could not break that one. Um, now if you're giving this away to people, this is just us and my finger smushed it. Just be careful of like leaving fingerprints on it if it's gonna be a gift. But for us, my family doesn't care. So, um, this is just going to be broken up like this. And you can do bigger or smaller pieces, depending. I'm just trying to be careful of touching the bisque off because it is still soft. And then there we go. And so I'm going to put this in a bag and then probably enjoy a piece before, and then before I put it in the fridge. And that's it. And that's, that's going to be our dessert for the week. And this will actually be more than a week. But this is nice just to have these back in the freezer again because we really like these. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today as I share with you a couple of desserts that I made for my family last week. Now, these desserts are still actually in our refrigerator and freezer. So they actually lasted longer than a week. And I want to make sure to remind everyone that the bark itself with the cookie butter is not gluten free, just the chocolate covered bananas. It can easily be gluten free by choosing a different topping, but it is not gluten free with the cookie butter. It does have wheat in it. So I just wanted to make sure to let everybody know. And I just again wanted to thank you guys. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and check out one of these videos next.